What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. Since I'm about Scream 6 in this video here again today. So as you see here on your screen, we did get that production weekly update yesterday and it did include the name of Courtney Cox this time around. So that's one of the first official type of listings that we have as far as like to go ahead and say that she is on board to participate in the project. Now we will await to, of course, hear it from the other outlets who have already kind of jumped the gun, considering that she had previously stated that she had received the script. So they took that as confirmation that that meant she would actually be returning. But she could again, like I stated in a few videos ago, she could read the script. She could say, I don't want to do this, but pretty much all of the major outlets have already said that she's going to be in the movie. So I guess there really is no real reason to come out again and confirm it when you already kind of have by jumping the gun. But <laughs> she's most likely has now signed on to the project and we'll see if that changes going forward. And we, of course, will only hope to get confirmation soon that Nev Campbell has jumped on board the project, get confirmation that all the returning survivors from all the survivors from screen five will be returning and then also factoring in uh patrick dempsey hopefully hayden panettiere and any other well-known stars that have survived previous ghost face killings so they can come along and enjoy another ride in woodsboro wherever it is i don't think it will be woodsboro but enjoy another ghost face killing spree in scream six when he gets ready to shoot this summer out in montreal and the other thing i wanted to talk about was just like okay like what would be the ultimate way to just thrust gail into the narrative of scream six now i know that that synopsis that may or may not again be true because we're gonna wait to see how true this is and how gail focused this movie might be like how scream 5 seemed to be dewey focused and when it relates to giving a member of the legacy character more to do versus the others so that previous plot synopsis was going or, or log line i would like to say was describing that she gets involved after a previous survivor is slashed or slain and she goes out seeking the help from old friends this of course would be sydney prescott most likely but let's say that something else happens and i'll leave a link to this theory because this is actually somebody that suggested this over on reddit so if you hear this video i am giving you credit i like to give credit and also while i'm giving credit shout out to you again k because you were the one who has subscribed to production weekly and you've been letting us all know about all the goodies that are coming related to scream when they have updates in their new listings but you're going back to the reddit theory someone over on reddit proposed the idea of gail weathers getting a phone call i believe early on in the film maybe she's even the opening scene now of course this would instantly put into your brain oh no gail's gonna bite the dust she's not gonna make it out but this is also kind of going back to another opening i've talked about where i would say that gail and sydney got attacked simultaneously but only one of them gets attacked in this opening from what i recall from reading it on reddit gail was getting a, was involved in a phone conversation with ghostface got a little bit snip got a little bit um smart at the mouth as we know gail probably would <laughs> and then the conversations turns into them talking about sydney and then sydney ends up getting a phone call from gail because the ghostface person on the line with her during the opening tells her that sydney's not safe so when gail calls sydney sydney at this point is not is not with her husband or or the kids the the kids and mark are both outside or not even home they're out somewhere and she's just home and gail warns sydney about ghostface saying that she's not safe and that they're back and they seem to be targeting her once again and then while they're on the phone sydney hears a noise in the house she ends up getting attacked by a ghost face killer who's in the house similar to how ghost face came out from behind her in screen five and in and in the original screen or i think that was screen three yes the way she came the way gate came out of the closet in screen five was similar to how Ghostface came at her in scream three at the end at milton's house so that happens here during this opening while gail is over the phone and of course an altercation would ensue gail's probably gonna be very emotionally invested in what's going on in the other end since she can't see anything all she hears is a bunch of loud noises and grunts painful sounds probably coming from sydney painful sounds probably coming from the assailant she's involved in this tussle with which ultimately would end in someone biting the dust we wouldn't see all of this because we're going to be with gail while that tussle is going on and this is just going to be something that's getting the audience so anxious and getting your blood boiling and getting you in a very nervous mentality because when the silent com silence comes and all you hear let's say is just sydney saying or gail saying sydney are you there sydney are you okay and then sydney picks up the phone and then we find out she just took out a ghost face killer 
in the opening sequence. We would have our first Ghostface killer that has been killed in an opening sequence. But of course, this would not be the only Ghostface. This would then lead us into a narrative with the Carpenter sisters and Tara and her group of friends. And now they're being targeted by some Ghostface killers as well. And, you know, the narrative could just go from there. I think that would be a nice little more direct way to automatically get gail and sydney thrusted into the narrative because what this does is it makes them wonder if the carpenters are in danger because sydney could then reach out to sam or tara ask them if they are okay and then they say yeah they're fine but then the ghost face killings start up and of course along the way during the film they'll wonder if the person that attacked sydney at the opening had anything to do with the two people that attacked the carpenters or in, and is continuing to attack them target them attack them and their friends chad and mindy whatever other newcomers are along the way in this new film targeting kirby now if she's back in full effect and they find out in the end that they weren't really connected it just was i guess pure coincidence unfortunately some random person targeted sydney and they were taunting gail over the phone this could be someone else that was working with the person in the house or it could be someone who was in who was in Sydney's house the entire time, but just talking to Gail. And for whatever reason, from where Sydney was positioned in her home, she just never heard the person. There's always been something I know that's bothered people. How did they not hear them when they're right behind them <laughs> like Sam in the hospital? But in the end, they would find out that this person that's attacking Sam and Tara had nothing to do with the people who attacked Sydney in the opening. But if you would prefer that they did have some type of involvement and that's how you get your first three Ghostface killers or maybe four that are all intertwined and connected and we're targeting our group of survivors. Once again, you can have that, too. I just think it would be a lot more um, maybe just twisty if you find out that this was just a random attack on Sydney that by pure coincidence was just someone doing their own thing. But these two people targeting the Carpenters is not someone who was involved with that person, but it's just pure coincidence, like a message to Sydney to reach out to these girls because they're about to be endangered again. And we go from there. That would be a nice way to thrust them directly into the narrative of Scream 6. But let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below. Again, I'll leave a link to this theory actually in the description. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.